Good morning, Clemson fans. Welcome to Death Valley Live, presented by Wells Fargo. Mark Childress here with Daja Davidson. I think I've got five layers on now, Daja. It's getting <laughs> colder as we're getting closer to the game. I think the elements might uh, have a factor in the ball game. Yeah, tonight. I mean, it really is. I don't think I expected it to be this cold today. Yesterday, I felt like was really beautiful weather. And then out of nowhere today, and like you said, as we've been out here over the course of the morning, it's been getting chillier and chillier. This wind is really something out here. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the wind that's uh, playing the difference. I've been here since about 8.15 this morning. We did Tiger Tailgate Show before we did this, and it's definitely getting chilly. Okay, a couple of pieces of business go to twitter right now hashtag death valley live for an opportunity to win a signed nike football this is an incredible giveaway you go to twitter you hashtag death valley live spread the word about the show today and uh, you have a chance to win a nike football and death valley live is always presented by wells fargo wells fargo understands being a tiger fan means there's no off season with the wells fargo Tigers debit card. You can show off your Clemson pride 24-7. Visit wellsfargo.com to learn more. So the team arrived uh, what uh, maybe about an hour or so ago now. I believe we've got some video that we can check out as the team's getting here today. And uh, always excited to see them getting off the bus. Dabo's always pumped up. Absolutely. You know, it, it's it's a little bit different having to deal with that this year, but I feel like we have a lot of fans that kind of come and hover around as those guys hop off of the buses. You see Coach Sweeney there as he was coming through with his face shield. It's back. We saw that, um, you know, disappear a couple weeks ago. Everyone's being really smart and safe, socially distancing. The cheerleaders are out there. You've got the band playing. So there still is that really great atmosphere of getting ready for what will be an exciting day of Clemson football. It's going to be an interesting day for Clemson football as well. There's a number of starters. You've probably heard a little bit about it this week. There is a positive COVID test that is having an impact on the ball game today. And there's a number of defensive starters that are going to be missing as well. And that's going to be the big story, Dodge. There's a chance for some young guys to step up. Absolutely. We got to talk with Don Munson earlier and, you know, he's talking about that he's not as worried about that quarterback position, that he's actually looking elsewhere. I think for me, I'm really excited to see some of these guys like Jake Venables get to step up and step in. These are the games that I think makes the next, um, you know, group of great players. They have to decide to step up to the plate. And today, a lot of players are going to have to decide to do that. There are three defensive starters that are officially out of the ball game today. So Tyler Davis, the defensive tackle, he is not on the availability report. Mike Jones Jr. is not on the availability report. We already knew Jamie Skowski would not be on the availability report today. That is three of 11 defensive starters that will not be taking a snap for the Tigers today. Absolutely. And those Tigers are right now getting warmed up for what will be an exciting game today. Again, if you are just tuning in, welcome to Death Valley Live. If you missed us in the beginning, I am Daja Davidson, joined by Mark Childress. We are your hosts today. We are taking a live look right now on the field, presented to you by Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo bringing you closer to the Clemson Tiger action than ever before. See the Tiger uh, special teams getting warmed up. You saw BT Potter. There's Will Spires, who was given an award this week for a specialist award by the ACC. He's been having a great season. He's been throwing passes. He's been running the football, doing all kinds of fantastic stuff uh, throughout the season. There's Will Sweeney, of course, one of the holders. Everybody getting ready for the ball game today. Uh, fans are starting to trickle into uh, Memorial Stadium. We're getting about an hour away from kickoff, a little bit under an hour away from kickoff now between the Tigers and the Boston College Eagles today. You know what's interesting is we're talking about how cold it is. We're pretty chilly, um, but we just were on the Tiger Tailgate show with Kendall Joseph, former linebacker, who talked about this is really the perfect weather for players. He's like, yeah, we love, love this because it's, you know, cooler to you, but it's actually perfect as we get our bodies moving and warmed up. We're taking a look right now at the quarterback position group. This is the group that I think most fans have their eyes on, but you know, I think it's going to be a really great day to watch this guy right here, DJ U, take over the football team today. DJ Ui Ungalale, we're all look. They've even got a pronunciation up there, doing uh, doing yeah. our jobs perfectly Uwe here. Ungalale. yeah. DJ is six foot four, two hundred and fifty pounds, and I was looking at this last night, Daja. He is bigger than any of the linebackers on the roster for the Clemson Tigers. <laughs> He's kind of like Taj Boyd. He's got that big size that goes with him, and I think we'll be seeing him running the football a lot today. And then, of course, Tyson Pumachan may be getting some snaps today as well. I mean, we're all assuming it's going to be DJ all game, but Tyson's been playing. Uh, 
uh, some snaps this season, and he may get the football today some also. Yeah, and I think, you know, what we've learned as we talk to former players week after week is these guys are being prepared from before this moment ever comes. I think oftentimes as fans we feel like this all of a sudden came up out of nowhere. Trevor has COVID. He's out. What are they going to do? These guys are prepped from day one for this moment right here, and they're ready to step up and step in. And today we'll get to see what they do when the opportunity is finally here. DJ's only thrown 19 passes this season. You see eight carries for 34 yards and a couple of touchdowns. That's where I think we're all expecting to see is him running the football a lot. But I get the feeling they're going to set him up with some early throws to get him comfortable. And DJ's arm, I mean, he has a rocket launcher for an arm. He can sling that ball down the field. It would not surprise me to see them taking some shots today. Yeah, and you know, he has been prepped and coached on and off the field by the greatest player in college football in Trevor Lawrence all season long. So you you have to know that this guy's been mentored by the greatest in the game right now, and, and he is ready for this moment, and I'm really excited to see what he's going to do with it. But yeah, I think we're going to get to see him get comfortable, get um, this offense kind of that chemistry rolling and, and seeing what they can get started. And, and we talk week after week, getting started early is one of the things, but I think today the key he is really getting that mojo, getting that chemistry, setting that offense up to feel really comfortable with each other with these adjustments and see what kind of magic they can make happen. I haven't been able to say that yes, this yet this season. I hope I don't say it again, but hey, Trevor, if you're watching, we talk really great about you every <laughs> week on the show as well. So yeah. if you're watching at home right now, getting ready, uh, get better. And, and here's his statement from earlier this week, uh, Trevor Lawrence, uh, and this is a quote from him. I've tested positive for COVID-19. My symptoms have been relatively mild. While I am following protocol from Clemson and the ACC, the only thing that hurts is missing an opportunity to be with my teammates this weekend and the game I love. I hate that I can't be there, but I'll be watching from isolation and pulling for our guys while I wait for an opportunity to rejoin the team. God bless and go Tigers. Very well said from Trevor. We're all pulling for you. Obviously, we're hoping those symptoms go away quickly. And everybody's already talking about next week at Notre Dame. We're of not going to focus on that quite no. yet. We've got business to take care of today, but hoping he gets better, and at least that's an opportunity potentially for him next week. Yeah, and that's what's so great about the culture of this Clemson football program is that's how they attack games anyway. Yep. Week to week, we've got to talk about the group that we're facing right now, and the matchup that we're facing today is Clemson versus Boston College. You see, the winds are whipping around. I had to paper clip my card back <laughs> into or underneath here so it doesn't start blowing around. So, again, if you are headed into the stadium, you're, you're checking us out while you're in your tailgates or something like that, uh, you might want to put that extra layer on because this wind is really adding some extra temperatures here. Hey, let's look at uh, the matchups today. Uh, the record on the season for uh, Boston College, they've got four wins already on the year, averaging about 27.5 points a game. Rushing yards, 595. Passing yards, 1,672. That's not what we expect to see usually from a Boston College team, but they've got a new coach in this in this year, Jeff Hafley, who came over from Ohio State, and he's got them throwing the football with Phil Jerkovic, who's been a fantastic quarterback transfer from Notre Dame. He's been doing a lot of damage, Daja. Yeah, and, you know, I think that does give them, you know, some sort of advantage, if you will, on their side of the football, that this coach has seen Clemson play. He knows what to expect out of the really excellent the excellent playmaker and, and decision maker and Tony Elliott. So, you know, he's there's no question that he's got this Boston College team fired up. They know that the Clemson team is facing some adversity right now. We've got a lot of players out on the offense and defensive side of the ball. It's going to come down to understanding that this culture here at this program is about taking it day by day day, stepping up when the opportunity arises, and doing your job. The Tigers 6-0, of course, on the season. They're averaging a lot of points per game, 48.2 points per game. Are you kidding me? That's top 10 in the country. Rushing yards over 1,000, over 2,000 passing yards, 3,100 in total. So Clemson's numbers look great, and this guy also looks great. Amari Rogers has been having a fantastic season. He's top 10 in the country in receiving yards. Yeah, you know, I think we often put him in this category of just a slot receiver. He's shown a lot more skill set than that this year, and, and no question that he will make a huge difference in today's game. He's really expanded and, and, and pushed his stock further up, I feel like, week after week, showing just how far he can really go in, in catching the football. He's on pace for a 1,000-yard season and a shortened season, right? They'll be playing one less game than normal, five touchdowns. And 
this is a guy, he's a veteran leader on this offense that doesn't have a lot of veteran leaders now, of course, with Travis out, or pardon me, with Trevor out. Travis is in the backfield as well. But I think he is an important piece maybe early in this game for DJ to be able to get the football to him. Maybe you're completing some quick passes out in the flat, maybe some quick slants to Amari and calm everybody down mm -hmm. and get the ball moving on offense. Yeah, we know that Amari is a guy that Trevor really trusts, um, and I think that that will definitely probably translate over into DJ getting into the football today, uh, a football game today. Like I said, it's about establishing that chemistry, and if you can, you know, get that communication rolling with someone like Amari and start feeling comfortable with throwing the football, then you can really get this game rolling. And chemistry is an important word, right? Trevor obviously has it with Damari and a lot of the players on the offense. There hasn't really been a quarterback battle for Clemson this year, so DJ probably has not spent a lot of time with the ones and the guys that he's been playing with today. So hopefully a chance to do that in practice this week. And what can you say about this offensive line? They want to protect DJ today. Maybe more run block, more run blocking than pass blocking today on the table. Yeah, you know, um, it, this is a really solid and strong group. I think when we talk about which groups we have our eye on, this is usually not one of them because these guys have been so solid pretty much all season long in protecting the quarterback, keeping Trevor safe, and today doing the same thing for DJU. Cade Stewart, the graduate uh, senior at center. You've got Bockhorst and Carmen, the two juniors, and the two sophomores on the other side, Will Putnam and Jordan McFadden, have been doing a good job this year. And when they run the football, you think they're probably going to run it over there behind Jackson Carmen, who's one of the best offensive linemen in the country. Yeah, you're taking a look there right now, live down on the field as these guys get warmed up. It probably feels amazing in the stadium right yes. now from where they are. It's super chilly right here where we are. So, again, um, if you're coming into the stadium today, make sure you bring some extra layers. But these guys are probably just perfectly warm. That sun's right down in that, that valley right now, and they are uh, getting prepped and warmed up for what will be a great matchup against the Boston College Eagles. You saw Stewart and Uwe Ungalo lay there practicing the center to quarterback exchange again tiger quarterbacks don't go under center all that often but there might be some important times to do it today or maybe that's a new wrinkle that we're going to see today if they're more run oriented maybe they're going to put them under center more give them a little bit better rhythm there for the running game yeah, I think we'll probably see a lot of different looks, especially in the beginning, like you said, to get that chemistry rolling to see what's going to work out. Um, and, and I'm excited to see what's going to end up being, you know, the flow and the mojo once things uh, start rolling out um, today. It's really, it should be really exciting for us to Agreed. see maybe some different looks than we've seen before. Well, fans, Prisma, Prisma Health wants to remind you to mask up. Whether you're inside Death Valley or watching the game in a public area, remember to wear your mask. Be smart and stand apart. With that, we're going to move right along into some trivia, Mark. We okay. do this every week. This is brought to you by First Citizens. And here's the question that I have for you this week, Mark. On November 1st, 2008, Coach Dabo Sweeney recorded his very first win as Clemson's head coach against which team? I know this because we had the president of the Gridiron Club for Boston College, Paul Crisioni, on the Tiger Tailgate show earlier. It is the Boston College Eagles. That is correct. He recorded his first win at BC in 2008. That was a 27-21 victory over the Eagles. Tomorrow marks the 12th anniversary from the very beginning of his head coach journey of the Clemson Tigers. How cool is that? It really is cool, yeah. and it seems like yesterday. 12 years ago. I know. that It seems really kind of bizarre, but... 27-21, first victory over BC. Man, it's, it, it, we've come a long way since then. We really have. There's Travis Etienne. He is 43 yards away from becoming the all-time leading rusher in the history of the Atlantic Coast Conference. An absolutely amazing record. I would expect if he does not get that today, something's probably gone horribly wrong because I think he's going to be getting the ball a number of times. He's only carried the ball more than 20 times in the game as a Clemson Tiger two different occasions. One of those was in 2018 against Syracuse in the Chase Bryce game. He also did it against South Carolina a few years back as well. So a lot of Clemson fans have been saying, feed that ball to number nine, I think you're going to get your wish today. Yeah, and I want him to just absolutely break loose today. I just I, I just want to see him find a gap as we know that he's able to and just put on that steam and burst through it and just absolutely take it to the house. I really want to see him turn on those jets today. He's got a chance to move into the top six all-time in rushing touchdowns in FBS history and the top five all-time in total touchdowns, rushing and receiving 
in FBS history. Just the records that he's continuing to knock down on a week-by-week -week basis. But I'm going to tell you what, becoming the all-time leading rusher in the ACC, that is a special one that he will remember forever. Hopefully he's knocking that out in the first quarter today, 43 yards. Maybe he gets a big rush early on. It'll be interesting to see what the crowd's reaction to that is today as well because that is a record that when he puts it out there, especially in today's game where you don't see people running the football as much as you have in the past, that's a record that might stand for a long time. And again, talking about only two games with greater than 20 carries, I mean, come on. He's he's making these these plays. He's, he's breaking these records and, and reaching these incredible accolades with less than 20 carries a game. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> he is, right. I mean, it, it's the yards per rush, I think, that's the most amazing part yeah. of it because – if you look at a lot of the guys up on the list, they're former Wisconsin running backs. It's Ron Dane and all of these guys that used to get the ball, you know, 35 times a game for right. 12 games a season. So what Travis is doing is really special. Uh, we're starting to get closer now. Thanks for hanging out with us here on Death Valley Live. Mark Childress here with Daja Davidson. We do this before all the home games. There's only more, one more home game left after this. This is home oh, game number five. Crazy. It's the fourth of the month. I think this is the, uh, the second time ever, I believe, that Clemson could win five games in a month. But having four home games in the month of October, culminating right here on Halloween today. It's been a really unique wrinkle to the season because the Tigers are going to be on the road a lot between now and the end of the year. Yeah, no question. And I don't know, I think you mentioned earlier how many times we've played on Halloween. Twice? Maybe 2016, I think we heard earlier. I remember that one against NC State. I do remember that one. And then I think sometime in the 80s was the last time that we yeah, had a Halloween Recently, game. it hasn't been a lot. I think if we win today, we'll be 7-2 and two all time at home on Halloween. And uh, for all the kids out there that might be watching, they're they're ready. I mean, oh, I know yeah. they're excited about the game today. <laughs> Maybe they're already in their costumes and going out there today. But they're going to go out tonight and hopefully get a lot of candy in a very socially distanced and practical way. But hopefully a uh, happy Halloween for a ton of the folks out there. Let's take a look at the starting lineups today. And you need to pay attention because there's a lot of changes in them. On the offensive side, uh, not a whole lot of changes, right? You see the offensive line up front that we already talked about. Um out there. You do have Spectre, Brandon Spectre getting a start uh, on the offense today, which is nice to see as well. So a new face in the starting lineup and of course DJ Ui Ungalale, but uh, did not expect Brandon Spectre in the starting lineup today on offense. Great to see him. He's been having a fantastic year so far. Yeah, and we're talking about the things that are shaking up on the defensive side of the ball. Of course, we've got the two freshmen in Brissy and Murphy who have been just absolutely incredible this year along with but, but pretty much that's looking um overall the same except for missing some big fo folks in uh tyler davis of course and jamie skalski we're going to definitely miss those guys in today's game yep so you do see uh, jake venables in there and trenton simpson the freshman wow uh, they're both going to be starting linebackers today also great to see darion kendrick who missed last week's game he is back in the lineup today so we should have a full force of defensive backs and Boston College likes to throw the football a lot so having the secondary back having everyone back and especially Darian Kendrick he has been graded by pro football focus as the top defensive back in the country so far this season you don't hear his name a whole lot in games Daja because they basically don't throw the ball to the guys that he's guarding yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see if we will a little bit more today, considering that this new BC team does like to put it in the air a little bit more. Are they going to be willing to take that risk? You know, establishing the run game is, is what we typically knew them to do, and that's going to be really difficult for them to do um, against this Clemson Tigers defense, regardless of having some changes in those starting positions. So it'll be interesting to see what Darion Kendrick can get rolling with today. Tigers loose, as always, as they're getting warmed up and excited to go. Len J. Dixon will probably be getting uh, more carries than expected today, would be my guess. If we're, we're all making the assumption that Clemson's just going to run the football a lot. Tony Elliott's a really good offensive coordinator. I got the feeling he might have some tricks up his sleeve. He always does. We know that. You know, we go in thinking one thing, and then the plan, you know, starts rolling out. And that's what I talked about even with these changes that we're seeing on both the offense and defensive side of the ball is they have been preparing for this all week long and really all season long. They prepare for moments like this. And I think, um, you know, these are the moments where you have someone step up to the plate and, and, and the plays that might be called today are going to definitely 
definitely show that these guys are prepared to be able to step in. It won't probably just be Travis Etienne running the ball the entire time. I think we're going to get to see that ball float around in the air and see who can really go up and climb the ladder and get it. Yeah, one of the guys who's been climbing the ladder and get it, you saw him at the very end of uh, the, the shots from inside the stadium there. It's the tight end, Davis Allen, the sophomore. He scored a touchdown now in three consecutive ball games. There's a lot of Clemson fans out there. Throw the ball to the tight end. Work the middle of the field. Tigers have been doing it this year. Braden Galloway's had some uh, breakout games. But Davis Allen has been consistent. He's a great blocker. You've seen him freeing up Travis Etienne a number of times. And again, TD's now in three straight games. Yeah, and I think I talked about that earlier this year, that the depth really at that tight end position looks really, really good. And I think we've seen that you know, over the course of the last couple weeks, really seeing that position being utilized, the development of the guys in that depth chart. And it's going to probably come into play a lot today I think as well yeah I uh, I also think the say hey, Davis Allen again good job guys I figured you would go back to him and show him in there because uh, it's great stuff that he's been doing and again it's the blocking that he's been doing as well you remember Travis Etienne's big long run a couple of weeks ago Davis Allen just came across and absolutely destroyed a guy to blow that hole open and give Travis Etienne not a free path to the end zone but at least a free path to get to the secondary and then he did all the work from there you know, we talked to Don Munson earlier on the Tiger Tailgate show, and he said he's not actually really going to be looking at that quarterback position today. Mark, what position are you probably keeping your eye on um, considering all of the changes that are being made in today's game? Yeah, on the offensive side of the ball, I am going to be interested to see what we do from a wide receiver perspective, right? A lot of these guys might not have taken as many throws. Well, I know they haven't taken as many throws from DJ as they have from Trevor Lawrence. Right. But having a chemistry there, figuring out who he's the most comfortable with, I think will be interesting. Of course, Amari Rogers is out there. We talked about him earlier. And then you have Spectre starting which was kind of a surprise to me, Brandon Spector. Not a surprise because he's not worthy of starting, but it's the first time we're seeing him, the freshman in a position this year. So maybe that's a guy, Spector, that has that chemistry with DJ as, they, as DJ's been running with the twos a lot of time. So maybe they're going to try to get him out there and give him a comfort zone. And obviously getting the ball to the backs in the backfield um, – on the passing game has been an important part of what Clemson's been doing all season. But I'm going to be watching those wide receivers to see who's DJ comfortable with, yeah. who's he looking for, who are they scripting the early plays to to get him the ball. Yeah, you know, really, I, I'm really thinking the same thing, but I am also excited to see the running back rotation as well. I expect Travis Etienne to see a lot of touches today, but we've got to, again, talk about the depth. We've got several guys at that position as well who have looked really good in some games this season um, when they've had the opportunity to get in and just wanting to see what kind of talent we've got coming up next in that running back position. We haven't seen a two-back set from the Tigers a whole lot over the years. They've been sneaking it in there yeah. a little bit so far this season where you'll see Travis and Lin Jay out there together. I wonder if we see some more of that today. I'm really excited to see what Tony Elliott has dialed up to make DJ comfortable and to get the momentum going on the offense for the Tigers. You see Dabo is getting ready to go, excited as always. We've got orange sweatshirt Dabo today. That's a good thing he wins. <laughs> well, he wins a game in just about anything he wears, but he's, he's particularly good in the orange sweatshirt. Yeah, you know, you talk about Jake Venables being in and, you know, the, I, I talked about, you know, these guys being prepared for moments like these. He's really probably been prepared for birth, from birth. When you have <laughs> yes. a dad who has the intensity of Coach Brent Venables, I mean, you don't have a choice but to have that in you and be ready for moments like this one where you've got to step up and step up big. And you've got Trenton Simpson stepping up to replace Mike Jones Jr. Right behind Trenton Simpson is Tyler Venables. So I think there's will be moments today where you'll have Brent Venables on the sidelines, and then you'll have Jake and Tyler in the lineup potentially at the same time. It's going to be good stuff. And there's Brent getting ready for the ball game today as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't even know where you get that kind of energy from. I, I, if he could buy it, just let me know where because I don't, I don't have that. <laughs> I'm excited to see what we do from a defensive perspective today as well. And again, Boston College normally when they come in here, you're used to seeing them line it up and smash mouth football, run right. the football a lot, try to out tough you, out physical you, throw to the tight ends a lot. With Phil Jerkovic this year for the Boston College Eagles, they're throwing the football all over the field. They don't run the football a whole lot. In fact, they're averaging less than 100 yards rushing a game on offense, and that includes an explosion of rushing that they had against Georgia Tech last week. So you're going to be seeing a lot of throwing the football today. It'll be interesting. Are we going to go with the three-man front? Will it be the 3-3-5 three, three, that we've seen a lot last season? We've seen more than I think folks expected this season. Or will they go with a four-down lineman? 
And right here, we are taking a live look at the Clemson warm-ups that was presented to you by Wells Fargo. And now the guys are lining up for the Walk of Champions. They're gathering together there. You see them getting ready. This has really become a really exciting tradition for this Clemson football team. There they are, the Walk of Champions. Hear the music in the background. We ready. I love it. That's the kind of stuff that gives me hype. <laughs> well, they get hyped as well. One oh, of our yeah. favorite pregame traditions that uh, that goes down. And we're happy to be able to show it to you here for all the home games on Death Valley Live. And the players go back with their position groups and continue to prepare for the ball game today. Let's see. We're a little bit over a half hour now away from kickoff between the Boston College Eagles and the number one ranked Clemson Tigers. And let's not rest on the fact that the Tigers remain number one. I know a lot of folks were a little bit frustrated with the performance against Syracuse last week. They still won by 25 plus points. It didn't really hurt them in the polls at all. Clemson a resounding number one in the country, hoping to be able to deliver a win today and keep that position. Absolutely, and you know, we talk about this team facing adversity all the time, and yes. it's, you show who you really are in, in the face of adversity. And last week, I think there was a little bit more than they were expecting. And that, I, I genuinely think it prepares them for games like this one where you have so much against you. You've had that last week. Now how are you going to face it this week? You're a little bit more prepared because you've seen this before. You know what I mean? Yes, and adversity and confusion, I guess, around the quarterback position. You've got to go back to 2018 Absolutely. where Kelly Bryant and Trevor Lawrence were playing together. Uh, in the first four games of the season, kind of splitting time. Then uh, Lawrence was named the starter. He comes out for his first game starting ever against right. Syracuse, and he gets hurt, and right. Chase Bryce has to come into the ball game. So that's the last time, I think, at the quarterback position we really had to go back and think about adversity in a ball game. There's one of the uh, quarterbacks that may be seeing some action today. Again, we've all been talking about DJ Uyunglele. Tyson Pumachan has been getting some snaps so far this season, the redshirt freshman, and he's been doing a good job. He likes to run the football as well. You see he's got uh, 81 rush yards, 73 pass yards so far on the season. We may see some Tyson today. We don't know what we are going to see know, throughout the game today. <laughs> yeah. We're just assuming, oh, DJ's going to get the ball from the first snap to the last snap. There might be some wrinkles and packages put in for Tyson. Yeah, I mean, I think there is going to have to be some, I hate to call it experimentation, but a little bit of experimenting to see what's going to end up working so that we can get it done today. Now, the other way we see him a lot is, is DJ just comes in and goes scorched earth, Tigers are way up, and then you see the backup quarterback, because he would be the number two quarterback That's today, right. getting in in the third and fourth quarters. That would be a nice way to see a lot of Pumachan today that we'd all be excited about. Also, you cannot forget... About number 18 right there, Hunter Helms has been playing so uh, well so far this season when he has gotten into some action and really looked good throwing the football. You know, DJ and Tyson had not really thrown the football mm -hmm. successfully a whole lot. You go back a couple of weeks ago when Hunter Helms comes into the ball game and he really did a good job of throwing that football. There might be some uh, wrinkles in there for him today as well. Yeah, I mean, not only came in, he two touchdowns. Yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, he looked really good. So there's a lot of talent right there in that quarterback position. So um, it's really going to be exciting to see what does come out. And then another talented group, defensive line. Yeah, the big boys. You see K.J. Henry has been having a good season. He's a starter, of course, on uh, one of the defensive ends. Miles Murphy there right behind him, uh, the freshman starting from the other defensive end position. And we'll see Brian Brissi, Jordan Williams, and Niles Pinkney probably clogging up the middle. In case you're just tuning in, Tyler Davis will not be playing today. Probably our best defensive tackle is having a great season, but just having trouble keeping him healthy. So he's out today. Hopefully he'll be back for Notre Dame next week, but they will miss that presence inside. And I think they missed him a little bit last week against Syracuse, who had some success running the football without Tyler there anchoring the middle. Yeah, but you know, what I think about, you know, of course we want these guys on the field, but, you know, for those who uh, will be on the sideline today, you're getting that extra sideline coaching. You know, you've got your, your coaches who are out there and, and giving to these guys all game long, but now you've got the added uh, leadership from these older guys and, uh, you know, these seniors and, and those who show great leadership to be able to uh, coach from the sidelines as well. It's a really great opportunity. Tigers continuing to warm up, and uh, we're getting closer to kickoff. But right now, let's send it over to Don Munson with Clemson's Athletic Director, Dan Radakovich, to hear a little bit more about what's going on behind the scenes. All right, Dan, as we uh, talk a little bit about uh, Clemson Athletics, uh, first and foremost, today is the Paw Journey game. So, I mean, 
if there's ever been a big part of what goes on in Clemson football is right when you walk into that football operations building there to your right and everything that happens in Paul Jurdy. You, it's such a great part of what, uh, you know, Coach Sweeney wanted to do from day one of his, uh, his tenure here as the football coaches to have Jeff Davis there as uh, someone who is helping our student athletes grow uh, off the football field uh, during this time period. It has just grown leaps and bounds. They do so many things from initial orientation to life skills to post um, graduate uh, job help uh, and placement type work. Uh, it's, it's really a separator. A lot of people have attempted to mimic it. Uh, a lot of people have come and looked at it. Um, but, you know, there's value in being the original and, and certainly Jeff and his, his team there do an outstanding job. And it's a huge part of our student athletes uh, experience within our football program. Yeah, uh, no doubt about that. All right, so uh, I know I've had a lot of people asking me about basketball information. We have got some basketball information, not necessarily a schedule, but at least information for, for our ticket holders and what they can expect for the upcoming season. That's right. And, you know, we've been working, as we did with Memorial Stadium, with the Department of Commerce and DHEC um, to put a plan together for reduced seating capacity, uh, much of the same uh, parameters that were utilized in Memorial Stadium can be used inside Little John Coliseum. So in rough numbers, we're going to be somewhere close to 1,900 uh, seats inside Little John Coliseum. The floor enclosure, the area where the students uh, normally would have those uh, retractable orange bleachers, they'll be uh, back this year, uh, not retracted. It'll be part of the court enclosure. The, the ACC has pulled together some very, very strict requirements as it relates to social distancing of the actual bench areas, uh, as well as how far uh, the court area should be from any fans. So uh, it's going to be a different look uh, for, for this year, uh, but one that uh, I hope our, our fans enjoy, uh, both being in person and on television. Uh, so the information that's gone out uh, to our fan base is, uh, you know, it, it's the latest that we have. It is absent a schedule, but we do know uh, who our opponents will be. We just don't know when they're going to come and uh, visit. But it's going to be, a, it, it'll be an exciting year on the men's side. Women's basketball obviously will not have any charge associated with them this year. It'll be free. Uh, and we hope people come out and uh, enjoy our women's program as well. Women's soccer will be playing tomorrow. They're in Tallahassee against Florida State, but we're about to start entering ACC championship phases for both the soccer programs. And that, and I think we also need to remind people that uh, these that are we just used to kind of sports that happen here in the fall, it's kind of a split season. We're going to see them again come back in, in spring. It, absolutely. Because of the truncated um, fall season, <clears throat> the men's uh, soccer uh Participants will play a tournament upcoming here in, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Clemson will be a part of that. Uh, they will get a first half winner. They will then come back in the spring, play again, uh, and then determine their automatic qualifier for the spring NCAA men's soccer championships. The women will also have a, a tournament. Both these tournaments will be 18 tournaments. Uh, however, whoever wins that will be the automatic qualifier to the NCAA tournament come the spring. But women's soccer will also play a spring season as well. Hopefully, we'll get a few more teams into the NCAA tournament come the spring of 2021. All right. Appreciate the information. There you go. There's, there's our athletic director, Dan Radakovich. Thanks, Don. Everybody have a great day today. Yeah, we get smarter every time you hear from Dan Radakovich. Uh, some good feedback on the soccer stuff. And I'm really getting excited about men's and women's basketball. We're right here by Little John Coliseum. I'll be heading in there a lot in the winter months to check out the Tigers. Yeah, I think we're all ready for a little bit of basketball once we get through this. It's going to be really exciting to see those guys and girls hit the court. Yeah, it absolutely will be. Welcome back in to Death Valley Live. Mark Childress, Stasha Davidson. We're here before all the home games. We're also here at halftime. So you can watch the first half of the game on ABC 
right when they go to half. I mean, legitimately, right when they go to half, come back over to social media. You're probably going there anyway to hang out with your friends and talk to them about the ball game. And you can watch us here from halftime on Death Valley Live as well. We'll have highlights, thoughts from the first half. You get to see the band performance as well. So pretty cool stuff at halftime also. Absolutely. For those of you who have friends who are here at the game, know that they're probably a little chilly today. That wind is howling out here today. Got the temperature a little bit low, and we are having to keep warm for sure today. See the fans out there in the stadium. Dodge, I went with the long sleeve T-shirt underneath the golf shirt with the pullover, and then I've added a jacket to that as well. Yes. So it is perfect football weather out here with a, a little crisp breeze in the air as well. Well, Sunday's... I'm sitting down watching NFL anyway, but now I am totally focused on the Clemson Tigers. Every single week, they're doing fantastic things in the NFL. And it's hard, really, Dasha, to find a game at all where there's not multiple Tigers, not just playing in games, but having a big impact on games as well. Isaiah Simmons has not been getting a lot of snaps so far this season for the Cardinals. So all he did was have like five snaps last week. He gets an interception to win the ball I game. I saw that at the one. End. Yeah, and it was really good. Yeah, I'm so glad that he finally had a big moment that I think hopefully will carry over from here and we'll see him performing even better as they continue to roll on down the season. Deshaun Watson over 300 yards and two touchdowns again. Uh, Texans not putting up a lot of wins, but they are more competitive now since they've dumped their coach, Bill O'Brien. So Deshaun continues to put up big numbers. B.J. Goodson, I won't even say quietly having a good season anymore. Seven tackles and an interception. He is putting up fantastic numbers this year for the Browns. T. Higgins, five receptions, 71 yards, and one touchdown. Him and Burrow, we talked about that chemistry between a wide receiver and a quarterback. Mm -hmm. I feel like him and Burrow have chemistry for the Bengals, and T's numbers are continuing to rise every week. Week. And New Hopkins, we would just put him on this in perpetuity. Another 100-yard week, right. another touchdown with the Cardinals having that big win over the Seahawks last week. So good stuff in the NFL from the Tigers for sure, as always. Some keys to the game uh, this week, Daja. For me, I think the first five minutes of this game are going to be key both on the defensive side and the offensive side. You're going to have a lot of new faces in the lineup on defense. You've got DJ Uyunglele under center for the Tigers on offense, and it's just keeping those emotions down and getting settled into the ball game. That's my first key is the first five minutes of this ball game. Yeah, and, and mine really is a great piggyback off of that because I'm all about momentum. Yes. When you can give a team momentum, there are crazy things that happen and that can happen. And so I want this Clemson football team to control the momentum, keep it away from the Boston College side of this football game. Don't let them think that they can hang in there with yeah. you just because you've got a lot of adversity facing you this week. So the key, the big key for me, like you said, controlling emotions, controlling the momentum of this game. I think that's great. Uh, another key for me, and I really use this key almost every week, but I think today it will be even more more specifically important, and that is turnovers. There's going to be turnovers in this ball game. Tigers need to win the turnover battle, and turnovers in the first half could really be a big momentum swing. If the Tigers can get that early lead, listen, Clemson's been jumping people all season long and getting some huge first quarter and early second quarter leads. If they could do that again today, that puts all the pressure on Boston College. But if the Eagles could get an early turnover and even grab a lead early in this ball game, that could put a different wrinkle on it. So turnovers is another one of my keys for today's game. Again, really perfect for me because mine is to protect the football. That's, you know, for turnovers, these these guys know that Travis Etienne will likely be running the football a lot, protect, protecting that football. Those guys are going to be wrapping and grabbing at that football, hoping to uh, cause a turnover. So protecting the football, controlling the momentum, keeping the emotions uh, nice and clear keep everyone focused. My keys for today's game. Yep, and final one for me. Number nine, Travis Etienne. He's going to get the football a lot today. We know what he can do. Yeah. Boston College, you know they're going to be packing the box. You know they're going to be trying to shut down the run early in this ball game and make Clemson try to have to rely on the pass. Travis Etienne is the kind of running back that even when they pack the box, even when they're scheming against him, he's got the ability to still make some big plays. So Travis Etienne, to me, really might be the number one key to the ball game today. And that's a good thing because when Travis gets the ball, unbelievably great things usually happen. <laughs> Absolutely. And a lot of teams have tried to stop him. Yeah. <laughs> a lot luck. of teams have tried. Good luck. So. Good luck to them today. You guys, we're going to send it on over right now to Tim Beret, who sat down this week with Coach Sweeney. This is presented to you by Prisma Health. Welcome to our pregame show. Tim Beret and head coach Dabo Sweeney. Coach, before we talk about today's game, a little special 
recognition day. It's Paw Journey Day. And I always thought the Paw Journey has so much to do with the culture of your program. Yeah, it does. I mean, that's where it really started. Um, I mean, all the way back to the day I became interim. And I found out that I got I had seven weeks to be a head coach. And I didn't know if I'd have any I, – I, I didn't know if I'd get a day after seven weeks. Uh, and so uh, literally, uh, you know, went over and went to my neighbor's house uh, late and uh, – because I needed to go, had to go get clothes and stuff. And then I, I went over to Jeff's house, Jeff Davis, who's my next door neighbor. And I said, hey, I, I'm going to be the head coach for seven weeks. And he's told me I got a chance. And, but, you know, here's, he said I could do whatever I want to do as a head coach. And I always had a vision for, you know, because the, the model back then was you had, you know, nine coaches, a couple of GAs, and maybe one support staff. And so the coaches had to be, they had to, and we still do, but, but, you know, coaches are busy. Coaches are game planning and stuff's always happening. And I just wanted to – I wanted to, to have a program that served the players and, and created opportunities and life skills and all those things. And, and I, so I went to Jeff and I said, hey, here's kind of my vision for what I'd like to do. And I want to create a – I called it a player relations department. And, I, and uh, so – he agreed to come on board for seven weeks, and that's kind of where it started. I just wanted people available that weren't coaches, they're just available to the players uh, to communicate, to, to listen, to, to navigate problems, career, you know, all that stuff. And then, so Jeff was a one man shop for several years. You know, I was able to start building a department, and, and now we have, you know, Rashard Hall and Travis Planks, Savannah Bailey, Reggie Pleasant, you know, all a part of Paul Journey. And when we, and then when we, it, it grew from Jeff. You know, and, and as Jeff was, got going in that role and figuring it out, and and you know, we, we we just he just grew it and grew it and grew it into eventually Paul Journey, uh, PAW, passionate about winning, but we they're going through a journey here, and um, and so Paul Journey is all about personal growth and life skills and community service, community engagement, career development, post career, uh, you know, service abroad, you you name it. Uh, internships, you know, just true life skills, uh, as we always say, you know, tools for life. And so it's amazing uh, what it's grown into. Jeff's been, Jeff's just phenomenal. I mean, he's just unbelievable. His vision, his his passion uh, for you know, what he does and, and everybody that's around him, they just do such an awesome job. So, and it's been to see it grow and to see our players, you know, really gravitate to it and as we've gone we've gotten better and better and and it's also a big leadership tool you know it's a huge way that we develop leadership within our program and as we say empowerment you know uh so yeah so it's, uh, it's really cool that we're able to you know kind of take a week and just celebrate all the great things that paul journey does well it's certainly one of the special aspects of your program and another special aspect of your program is the history and uh, in fact, Saturday's game will be the exact 124th anniversary of the first game in Clemson history when the Tigers mm -hmm. beat Furman over in Greenville with this group of players that actually hadn't even seen a football field before they played on one. And part of the history is playing Boston College, which goes back to Clemson's first uh, bowl victory. And uh, I know it's kind of special. You're going to play for a trophy and the players have an opportunity to win the Leather Helmet Award. Yeah, and, and it's my first win ever was against Boston College, and that's a moment I'll never, ever forget. In fact, it was my first win and Clemson's first win at Chestnut Hill. Correct. And uh, so th this this game always brings back uh, great memories uh, for me, you know, and, and that first game, and and I think ironically that was the first year that we were, that they started the Aurora McFadden Trophy in the leather helmet, and Spiller won it. Right. Uh, so, you know, it's been pretty cool to be able to, keep that trophy here for a while and we want to keep it here so this is a this is a, a an opponent that we have a lot of respect for and i think both fan bases it's a very mutual thing it's a good football team gonna be a challenge you faced their head coach last year he was the defensive coordinator at ohio state do they do the same things structurally as ohio state they did? do they do it looks almost exactly like ohio state you know and, and you know what that's that's why he's a good coach because he's got a, a system he believes in and a plan, and, and it's a you know he's got him well positioned. Uh, he's not trying to do too many things. Uh, he's given them a chance to be successful. Uh, these guys are playing hard. They're playing with confidence. They're playing with belief. 
And I, and I think what they're doing on offense is helping them on defense too because now this defense really believes, you know, that, hey, this is an offense that can go score. Uh, so, you know, I, I've been very impressed with them. Uh, they could, should easily be 5-1. and one. Mm-hmm. They, they had a real opportunity to beat North Carolina. That was a four-point game. The Virginia Tech games got away from them. Uh, they had five turnovers in that game. But outside of that, they have really played some good football and have gotten better as they've gone. All right, Coach, thanks very much. should be a great afternoon in Death Valley. Oh, yes, it will. Now, Clemson Google, Tim Bure going deep on the statistics there. And Dabo, you can obviously tell he loves playing Boston College. That's what he said because it was the, the sign or the place of his first victory as a Tiger and the first time Clemson had ever won up at Chestnut Hill. All right, around the ACC today, presented by Roto Rooters. Some interesting matchups. Wake Forest at Syracuse, also a noon game. You've got Charlotte going to take on Duke at 7 tonight. Notre Dame at Georgia Tech. Notre Dame's final tune-up before they host our Clemson Tigers next weekend. North Carolina at Virginia is an 8 o'clock kick. Virginia Tech at Louisville, this is the most interesting one at all. I can't figure out either one of these teams. That's a 4 o'clock kick today. It'll be interesting to see which team wins that one. Absolutely. It's uh, getting even chillier out here. Yeah, the temperature is going down. I mean, I've been out here since 8.15, and it has gotten colder and colder as we get closer to kickoff. But as uh, Kendall Joseph, we had him on Tiger Tailgate Show earlier today, Players love playing like this. He says they don't want it hot. They wanted it, you know, not brutally cold, but they want it as cold as they possibly can. Wind could play a factor today. Boston College loves to throw the football all over the field with their freshman quarterback, Phil Jerkovic. DJ might have to make some adjustments, especially on the long ball with this heavy wind today. You know, Kendall asked me as a former cheerleader, as you're seeing them there, he's like, I bet you guys were cold. I'm like, listen, we had ways of trying to get warm. We would put hand warmers in our shoes and our socks. (laughs) <laughs> you know, and in and, and a game like this one where they've got their half tops on right now, I could not imagine having the midriff top on right now with this kind of wind. I would just be frozen. <laughs> but I also told him if I played on the football team, I'd be sitting on the heated bench the whole time. So. <laughs> <laughs> and it's where the masks help today because you can put the mask over yeah, your face. to get that warmth, no yeah. question. There yeah. You go. So a positive of wearing a mask. So that's a good thing. You see Tiger Band there. They are getting ready to get Death Valley rocking. Let's take a live look back at their pregame performance right now, Memorial Stadium. If you're just joining us, welcome into Death Valley Live. Mark Childress here with Dodge and Davidson. Death Valley Live, always brought to you by Wells Fargo, bringing you closer to the Clemson Tiger action than ever before. Dodge, we talked about this last week. You said, as a Clemson cheerleader, you still remember the Tiger Rag dance. A note to production for the final home game. You should be doing that up here, (laughs) and we should be cutting back and forth 
from them doing it out on the field and you doing it up here. So I'm just planting okay. the seed for the final home game later this season. Interesting, interesting idea. We yes. will potentially take it into consideration. That's not a no. That's not a no. I'll <laughs> take it. In other news, fans, <laughs> you've probably heard us mention each week. This year is the 125th year of Clemson football. This is presented to you by Lending Tree. We had you vote on your top 125 players and top 10 games in Clemson history, and it is now time for the results. Here we go. Yeah, got uh, got some good stuff in here for uh, for the results for sure. And uh, you know, my favorite game that I would put on the list uh, of the top 10 games would be the Clemson Louisville game in 2016. I've been coming to Clemson games just about every one of them at home for about 23 years, 24 years. I've been to plenty before that as well. And that's my favorite game of the top 10 games that have rolled out. Absolutely. That's, that's a good one. That's a really good one. Mm -hmm. What what else do we have um, as far as the games? I know I know there have been a couple other good ones. I think I mentioned, I can't. I have a terrible memory, but it was Florida State here at home. We finally, what feels like, you know, defeated the first Goliath before we ever started slaying the dragon that was Alabama. We defeated yep. uh, Florida State here at home. And, and, and I remember that one because I was in the tunnel. I was working for the Clemson football program, hosting recruits on games day nice. and that was like the ultimate like come here we just beat florida state <laughs> yeah back when florida state had a pretty good football team because right now they don't have well, a very good no. football team as far as top players go you've got to put deshaun watson you're no putting question. cj spiller up on the list you know what levon kirkland he just got put in the ring of honor last year is yeah. one that was a favorite of mine growing up and there's so many great defensive players you know, i feel like when you talk about a top player list you automatically go quarterbacks running backs yeah. and here it wide receiver well, you some to, wide receivers yeah. with the defensive guys as well yeah 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 one of my favorite players of all time would have to be brian dawkins oh, just one yeah. of the greatest to mm -hmm. ever do it of course he has the brian dawkins award that's a huge honor for a player to win that award and and man what a light he has been for not only this clemson program but just across the country with the work that he's doing through um, his foundation but um, brian dawkins for sure one of my favorites yeah and the uh the, the perry brothers right oh. the yeah. and Michael Dean and some of the stuff they did seeing all their uh, their you know old footage and how fast they were even though they were so big was uh, was some pretty cool stuff <laughs> Absolutely. Well, fans, each week we bring you behind the scenes look at what it's like to be a part of the Clemson football team. Check out this video of Jamie Skalski getting into the Halloween spirit. This year I decided to really get into the spirit of Halloween. It may have been the costliest decision I've ever made. My greased up head went to the pumpkin no problem, but I can't get it out. Try again. I mean, I could try destroying the pumpkin, but as Coach V and I discovered, any blow to the pumpkin itself could prove fatal to me. At first I drove myself crazy thinking about all the things I should have done differently. I never should have played that joke on KJ. I never should have hollowed out the pumpkin in the first place. Then I realized I was being silly. I mean, the pumpkin should rot off my head in a month or two, right? You gotta go on social media. That is a shot for shot remake of that scene from The Office, which is a very yes. popular show. If you've never watched it, you should probably watch it because it's very funny. But I didn't realize that. I mean, they showed it side by side on social media absolutely genius work by our production staff they again. Do it we do so amazing great. stuff. They do it so great every year. This was a really good one because, of course, you're referencing The Office. I think my favorite was from a year or two years ago. They had Morgan Tadlock, who works at, uh, used to work in there. Now she's with the University of Houston, who worked in that office, uh, office with recruits. And she dressed up as like a scary like figure. They put all this makeup on her, and she went around like standing over people oh, and yeah. going in the mm -hmm. nap room, and they like turn on the lights. And there she stay. I mean, they just kill it every single year. And and this is what I talked about about how they love to keep it fun and family oriented. And these are you know some of those things that really shows you just how cool this program really is. And what a great team to be able to work with because if you can dream it up, they're they're, <laughs> they're absolutely like, sure, down for Let's it. do it. <laughs> yeah, they did a remake of a Drake video earlier this year, pretty much shot for shot as well. So they continue to raise. They're the best in the country the already, but they're continuing. For sure. To raise the bar. We'll say uh, we're, man, probably less than 10 minutes away now from kickoff. 
uh, between Boston College and the Tigers in this one today. The number one ranked Clemson Tigers are defending that number one ranking again this week as they continue to do it. I believe this will be the 21st game that they have been the number one ranked team in the country in the AP poll. The bulk of that coming in the Dabo Sweeney era, of course. They've never lost a regular season game as the number one ranked team in the country. I'm expecting that that will not change today. No, I do not think it will change today. What I think will happen today is we will see this team grow. Yes. We'll see them grow and be better than they were before they got to this week. And that's what's really exciting. We'll see a lot of great players who get an opportunity Opportunity to step up and be great. That's what I love to say. You know, you, you have the choice. Either I'm going to step up and do it or you're not. And we're going to get to see some of those guys switch that on today. And I'm excited to see who that's going to be. And what we've heard from a number of times, we do the Tiger Tailgate Show on the Clemson Tigers Network with Kendall Joseph before Death Valley Live every week. Kendall has said this every week this season. He's like, Coach Venables really rides the second string guys and the third string guys. He coaches them, if you will, more than he coaches the first string guys. Yeah. So when these guys are stepping into the lineup, they've been receiving a lot of that uh, effort from Coach Venables. And then again here at Clemson, because these backups are played on such a consistent basis, the jump isn't like, hey, I'm the second string linebacker and I only played four snaps in the last three games, right? Hey, let's go to the entrance video now for the Tigers. If you are lucky enough to ever witness this, you will not forget it. Perhaps the grandest entrance in sports. You've earned the right to wear the jersey. You've earned the right to put the helmet on, adorned by the paw. This is the, the culmination of preparation. And the only way you get to touch that rock you have to earn. And this is their destination. This rock that was brought from Death Valley, California, placed atop that hill by Coach Frank. To get off the bus, enter Death Valley, and to approach this rock, it's emotional. The intensity of the moment is very real. Boys, definitely. Each player touches Howard's rock for good luck. Touched by the Tigers for exactly 50 years. The Tigers are at the rock. The most exciting 25 seconds in the college The most exciting 25 seconds in college football. It's not going to give 110% to keep their filthy hands off my rock. Well, the players have boarded the buses. They are headed around now to the rock. This is a live look right now brought to you by Coca-Cola via the Coca-Cola bus cam. Always exciting watching that entrance video. It just gets you so ready for college football and as we lead up to the 25 most exciting seconds in college football. A number of Clemson Tigers on that bus for the first time as a starter for the Clemson Tigers. This will be DJ Uyunglele's first start as a Clemson Tiger, Jake Venable's first start, Trenton Simpson's first start. So there's three players right there that all of Clemson Nation will have their eye on today. I expect them all to do a spectacular job this afternoon. Yeah, I made this mention earlier. One of my favorite, favorite phrases is stay ready so you don't have to get ready. These guys, this team, they keep these guys ready to go for whatever moment may come up, including ones like today where we have several starters out and it's time for them to show that they've been ready for this moment, step into it and be absolutely great. Best pregame in all the country in college football. They, they always do these polls and they talk about all these other things they do at other schools. It's not yeah, anywhere it's close. Right. <laughs> this is number one. They've had to make some adjustments this year with less fans. You've got the band and the cheerleaders on the hill this season. It hasn't made any difference at all, though, to Clemson Nation. It's the best pregame anywhere. And we're so excited to be able to bring this to you for all the home games here on Death Valley Live. You see them here pulling around. You've got the Tiger and the Cub already there on the hill. The buses are pulling in. You know Coach Sweeney is about to bust around that corner at any second. Here they come, the Clemson Tigers football team. There they are. There he is. 
dancing in there. Look at Lynn J. Dixon dancing up to the rock. I would like to think I would do that. I have terrible rhythm. I would not. I would be hiding in the back. <laughs> would you be at the front of the group here, or would you keep kind of hanging back and doing I your own thing? I think the Lord knew to make me a girl because I would have been a really obnoxious boy. I'd been <laughs> in the front dancing, all kind of stuff, yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd be somewhere in the back there with the, the bouncing up and down helmets. Clemson taking on Boston College today. It's going to be a really interesting matchup. Boston College loves to throw the football. Clemson may be running the football more today. We really don't know what we're going to expect, but it should be an exciting time in Memorial Stadium in Death Valley today as everyone's on their feet getting ready to greet the Tigers. About to fire the cannon and start running down the hill. And then Dabo will be shot out of a cannon at the same time as he runs down. There it is. And there they go. Almost ran into the mascot there. That would have been an interesting uh, interesting wrinkle. Davos out on the field. Here come the Tigers as they're getting ready to play the Boston College Eagles today. Man, really loud crowd today. You can hear them yelling out here. That's fantastic. Yeah, this is going to be an exciting one. I think everyone's hyped up to see what these other players who get in today have to offer this football team. Tigers making their way down. Some guys jump, some guys don't. You would jump, according of to what course. you just said a second ago. Of course ago. I would jump. I'd probably be taking it super easy, <laughs> uh, making my way down in there, trying not to embarrass myself. Clemson Social had a great video. I think it was from last week with the Joe a Joe going down and jumping and doing some kind of fancy, uh, fancy leg kick. All right, folks, we will be back at halftime here on Death Valley Live. It's been a fun pregame. Turn your TV now over to ABC or tune your radio to the Clemson Tigers Network. For Daja Davidson, I'm Mark Childress. We will see you here at halftime on Death Valley Live.